Okay, hear me out. Brick filming as a niche of stop motion animation has a constant revolving door of new talent. Because using Lego as a subject matter to animate with is going to attract a lot of younger kids and teens, you see a large number of animators who are new to the game and are constantly trying to improve their craft. Amid these conditions, however, misconceptions crop up on how to improve animation and what looks better than what. And a lot of the time, people come to a similar vague conclusion that smoother animation is better animation. Here's why they're wrong. Part 1. Higher frame rate does not equal smoother animation. When I think about animation, I don't think about how many frames per second is required before it can be considered smooth. I think about how the subject moves in the space given. It's all about fluidity, how well the object moves around to give it a sense of life. It doesn't matter what frame rate that's in, it could be something as high as 30 or as low as 8. Take for example, The Feud of Brick Hill by Forlorn Creature. Its over-the-top cartoony animation is reflective of the personalities of the characters, which makes it easier for the audience to understand and empathize with them. You can even see it in the way each character walks when they were introduced. The blue astronaut, who's generally quite happy and friendly, leaps and bounds across the surface, whereas the angry and arrogant red astronaut stomps his way across. You could blur out the faces of the characters and still understand everything in the story. And you know what this was animated at? 12 and a half frames per second. Now on the other hand, let's take a look at a short recreation of the Civil War trailer I made back in 2015. Since I was going for a frame for frame remake, I copied the source clips as closely as I could, overlaying the live action clip onto my animation timeline. I wasn't considering the flow of the minifigure's movements and how those would translate from that of a human being. I instead focused on matching the original frame rate and animated at 24 FPS. Looking at the frame rates alone, You'd think the animation with double that of the other would be twice as smooth. Oh, but what'd you look at that? It goes to show that what's more important is that you understand how the frame rate you're filming in affects the way you animate. If you just animate like you would at 15 FPS when you're animating at 24 FPS, spacing between frames based on your sense of timing is drastically changed. You end up with something that feels too fast and jittery. However, that's not to say that frenetic animation is something you should avoid entirely. There are plenty of examples out there of it working excellently, it just depends on the context of what you're making. This kind of style works well with comedic and lighthearted videos that use a lot of motion. Like in the fastest and funniest LEGO Star Wars story ever told, or anything Brotherhood Workshop makes. Ever. Part 2. Easing in and out is bad. Okay, not really, but it's a good clickbait title to get you paid attention, right? Here's a little history lesson. Back in 1981, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, two of Disney's core animators during its golden era, wrote the Bible of Animation, The Illusion of Life. In it, they detail the 12 basic principles of animation that they use to make their movies so realistic. Side note, Alan Becker has an awesome video that concisely sums all of them up. You really should watch if you're interested in animation even slightly. Now, the sixth principle is ease in and ease out. So why use it? Because unless you're a robot, that's how most things in the world move. A body at rest tends to stay at rest, so if you want to get something moving, you gotta build up force, and that doesn't happen all at once. I see a lot of brick filmers using ease in and ease out to make their animation smoother and more lifelike, which is good. I brought up that story because a lot of people think it's a steadfast rule that applies to every clip that's animated, but rules that are blindly followed 100% of the time can stifle creativity and style. Back to Alan Becker, he gives the example of, if you have an object falling, it's not going to ease in as it approaches the ground. That's not how gravity works. There's no cushion to slow it down, so there's no ease out. Or in my case, what this can look like during fight scenes is that the punches aren't connecting. It doesn't feel like there's any force behind them because the animator is too focused on easing in and out when perhaps the frame should have been spaced apart more dramatically. Part 3. Don't sweat it. Ooh, look at those buttery, sweet frames! Everyone wants great animation, right? I mean, like, that's the main appeal of doing these kinds of videos. You get to work with your hands and breathe life into inanimate objects. But I worry that sometimes brick filmers can focus too much on the animation and in turn neglect aspects like lighting, cinematography, and narrative. And I think it needs to be said that you don't need to have flashy animation to make a good brick film. Just look at Rio Force's Sola Luna. 
Not a single word is uttered, yet this brick film has more heart and character in it than 90% of the stuff out there, and it achieves that through atmosphere. The soft piano tracks, glowing lighting, and character framing really make the film, while the animation, comparatively, is humble. It's not more than it needs to be, focusing on emotion and timing, rather than crazy 24 FPS low gravity backflips. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go for Oscar-worthy emotion and atmosphere with your projects, just, you know, don't overlook the other parts of the process that aren't animation. I know it can be hard and seem kind of like there's this wall of hurdles ahead, but this kind of stuff is what separates a fun video from a film. Conclusion. And of course, this isn't at all saying you shouldn't try working at a higher frame rate, or easing in and out, or making your animation better than it was before. Taking that next step, doing something new, pushing yourself to be better than you were before is all necessary for growth. And who am I to stop you? I know I just talked a bunch about what I think people should or shouldn't focus on with their animation, but if there's one thing you get out of this video, it's that you should make your videos however you want, and don't let what everyone else is doing pressure you into doing the same, even if it's considered animation law. 